Good morning. Um, what I'm going to talk about is what we've been doing at the Faculty of Education, and um, I was be, I was sort of involved in it in my other capacity as associate dean for development um, for the faculty. So the challenge we had, um, we are all very similar, and part of the challenge was that we had a double cohort coming in in September last year, and. Uh, some, well, at this university, we have the new centenary campus on the western end, and I would very much encourage you, those of you who haven't been there, to go west. It's that way. <laughs> oh, yes, sorry, that way, yes, go west. <laughs> right, and then, um, but for us, we don't have the fortune to be in the new campus, so we had to do with what we call a consequentials, okay? So we had consequential space, and um, so, so the university said, okay, at the end, when everything is settled, um, you would be able to have mo basically the whole of this building from this floor up, and um, the Rami Shaw building where um, we occupy basically all of it now. Um, so, so there are, of course, I mean, a lot of um, students, teachers, and officers outside of these two buildings. So what do we do? So we have to be thinking about what we do um, in a concrete way, and we don't... So the big move was to start last year, and so, of course, when you ask people, well, when people know that they're going to move, uh, usually, in terms of staff, the first question I get asked is, where would my office be? Will it have a window? Do I have it for myself? But of course, that is important. But more importantly, we would like to inc um, develop a space which would be congenial to our development. So, so we started with um, defining, discussing the principles for the consequential space. So that's how we started. And so the principles we started with was that we need to group, well, we would like to group people into cognate clusters so that it is much easier for us to informally interact. Otherwise, I mean, now we have say, uh, sometimes we're unfortunately, new colleagues coming in to join the faculty, uh, they would be slotted into uh, a room somewhere and, they, and the colleagues who are cognate to, to what they have been doing are actually in, totally in another building. So it's actually very difficult for them to, to get um, started. So we would like to um, create a space which we can put people to, into clusters, um, and we would like to have um, you know, administrative places and so on to be um, in another space. So, and we would like to see the formal and the informal learning spaces um, to be, so we would like to support learning, but learning and research and teaching, they are all, you know, one and the, and the same thing in a way. So, um, this is what, so we have it in phases, and we have the, the opening of our learning spaces, um, a couple, well, last month, and so this is the video we showed, <coughs> and it took place in fact in the space behind you. As a university. Okay, so if you want to revisit the video, you can go to our uh, faculty homepage. But I think the biggest challenge we have is only just started. Does it mean that if we have an improved infrastructure, then pedagogical improvement and innovation will follow? I'm not sure. We've only made the starting point. And so, and also, when we say that we're having the new um, sort of, you know, clusters of people um, together, would it actually already create the convivial cognate hubs? But I think what uh, Esther said this morning about um, having an ecosystem, I think the, at least the physical and digital space do provide <coughs> an enabling infrastructure for these things to happen. And so, um, I think the problem is only going to begin, and Brent will be taking us there. Okay. 